On the 30th of December, right between Christmas and New Year's Eve, a little girl named Katie Beers was born in the town of Mastic Beach, Long Island. But to people familiar with this case, she's ended up being known as the girl in the wall. Um, tell me something. You threw me on the bed. I just rolled my daughter back, the Weisberger back. Um, and then I was screaming my brains out. I heard her say a man was coming after her with a knife, and she said, oh, oh my God, here he comes. He started kissing me. Our biggest concern is that we find this child, you know, well and safe. My hand hit a nail. The last time I seen her was when she was walking towards the machine. Oh, I started getting scared. Then he um, locked me in that little cubby hole. Kidnapped, assaulted, trapped, and chained up. Welcome back to my channel. Today, we have another story time about a girl named Katie Beers. Now, Katie Beers was a young lady that was kidnapped by somebody she really, really trusted. Until this day, Katie still tells her story. She also is in the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, and she's a number one best-selling author. Katie Beer's story would take a huge turn. So stay tuned for her story. Katie Beers was a nine year old girl. Now, Katie Beers was basically abandoned and given to her godmother, Linda. And Linda would basically treat her like a Cinderella story. Linda didn't really care for or love her like a nine-year-old child deserved. Linda would basically turn around and make Katie do chores around the house, like washing dishes, cooking at nine years old, etc. for her and her husband. Now, Linda's whole plan was basically to treat Katie like Cinderella. And that's the only reason why she volunteered to take Katie in. But little did people know that Katie was being abused by Linda's husband, also known as Katie Uncle. Now, Katie Uncle would do sexual favors and abuse Katie every single day or every chance he get. So one day Katie would express this to her godmother Linda. Now Linda didn't believe Katie. Linda told Katie that she was lying and basically Katie would get uh, continue to get abused by Linda's husband. Now it was a family friend that would come around. His name was John. Now, John was basically a good person to Katie, at least Katie thought. John would take her places and basically treat her like a child supposed to be treated at nine years old. Now, John would also basically come by to check on her at times and at times get Katie and take Katie to his house where he was building this type of dungeon type thing where Katie would sometimes play. So John was like a superhero to Katie. Now, basically John is known as John around the neighborhood and children adored John. John also was basically in the uh, Big Brother Big Sister program. So a lot of children knew John especially Katie. Katie called John her best friend. So basically, John would come and pick up Katie two days before her 10th birthday to take her to this place called Spaceplex. Now, Spaceplex was basically a activity room for children. I mean, different games and everything. Basically, a fun room. So Spaceplex was basically for children and children would be there. Now, John picks up Katie and takes Katie to Spaceplex. And then all of a sudden, Katie's life takes a huge turn for the worse. Now, John says he looked around in Spaceplex after he turned his back for a quick second and Katie was gone. John immediately calls police to tell police 
that basically he don't know where Katie at and Katie has been abducted or something because he looked and he can't find her. Meanwhile, Katie is basically calling her godmother, Linda, and basically pleading to Linda to help her, help her on the voicemail. Now, she called Katie like, um, she called Linda several times, maybe like 19 times. And at the end, the last call on the voicemail, Linda winds up hearing Katie and basically trying to pick up the phone, but it would be too late for Linda to speak with Katie. But on the voicemail, Katie sounded worried, scared, like she didn't know what to do. And she stated that a man had done kidnapped her and basically she don't know what to do, please help. And then she also says that basically he's coming and didn't hang up. So by the time Linda answers the phone, it is too late. So at this time, Linda calls police. And meanwhile, the police is already at Spaceplex because of the family friend, John. Now, investigators quickly get on it. Linda let them hear basically the voicemail. And the detective instantly say, like, mm, this don't sound like... A stranger kidnapped her and why would a nine-year-old soon to be ten year old say kidnap usually they don't say kidnap and usually after they've been kidnapped they don't usually get away to be able to make a phone call something's not right so he would be right once he found out later on that something was not right about this phone call so meanwhile, investigators is questioning Katie's biological mother and brother, little John, and also basically questioning the man that she called her best friend that she was last seen with. And also now is questioning Linda and her husband. Now, mind you, Katie's biological mother had put in a report that Katie was being abused by her godmother and she wanted justice for her daughter because the uncle basically was abusing the daughter. So this was a active case already. So really detectives really was looking at Linda and her husband because they was the prime suspects. I mean, everybody, even Katie's mother, biological mother, had a motive for kidnapping her but the search would continue to go on and the search was going on to the point where now investigators was getting kind of skeptical and scared they would determine in their minds that katie would be found but they was afraid that she would be deceased they would find a deceased body of katie because time was just ticking and days start going even more into a couple of like days even longer so like these 17 days will be the worst time of katie's life now when they questioned john esposino basically john esposino said the same thing he basically turned around and Katie was gone. Now, John Esposino basically was this high-end, nice neighborhood guy that loved all the kids in the Big Brothers and Big Sisters program, all nine yards. But later, investigators would get news from the FBI that basically the auto from the call was not made from Katie. Now, Katie basically was forced to make this recording and somebody used the recording to call on the payphone outside of the basically facility that Katie was supposedly be at. But guess what? No signs of traces of Katie even ever being there. So whoever abducted her recorded her and used the recording for basically to make it look like Katie called Linda. Now, John Esposino, basically, they was just kept 
you know, investigating him. They just felt like it was a little more to the story, especially at the FBI basically brought that to their attention. So the FBI decided to basically look further into the case. Now, investigators went to question John and John allowed them into his house. And basically, John gave the same statement again. But this time, he looked it kind of suspicious, like he was nervous and scared at the same time. Basically, like he knew something. So investigators wanted to stay on him. But meanwhile, in between times, Linda and her husband was also still going to be charged with abuse and everything that was going on before Katie was abducted. Now, you can tell that Katie was not about to give up. Katie states that she finally broke loose out of the little dungeon that uh, John had her in by kept kicking and kicking, breaking the latch or something. She gets out and start putting her hands around and filling some keys and finally found keys. Well, John felt like that the detectives and stuff were now on him. So he wound up like locking Katie's hands, basically locking her up in like shingles or something. And Katie would once realize that those keys she found was to the cuffs that he was locking her with. So Katie hides the keys up under her pillow. And one particular day, John comes through and Katie is like, oh, like, what I'm going to do? That's before he locked her, y'all. And so she says that she had no time to figure out where those keys, like, basically came from. So she hurry up back in the dungeon. But little did she know that John was basically figuring out that she had done escaped out of the room but not out of the whole dungeon because he had layers to it, y'all. So by the time he get in there, he rapes her. Like, and this was the first day, but he would repeatedly rape her days and days in after, you know, he realized she broke loose. But he would also chain her. So one day he wasn't coming because it started getting to where he wasn't coming every day because he felt like police was on to him. So this was giving Katie the opportunity to be able to break herself loose. So she tried the keys and to see could she get out of what he locked her in. And little and behold, John wasn't as smart as he thought he was. Katie was able to get out of those chains. So she would now be trying to figure out how to escape. Because John basically fixed the boat that she broke in the first place. So she's just trying to figure out strategies. And every time John would come down there, here goes Katie. Basically trying to tell him that she's sick, she doesn't feel good, like I'm going to need to go to school. Basically she's on him, basically like detectives for a 10 year old. She's literally on to him, like on his case. And so he started getting even more worried with Katie in his ear, ear and the detectives in his ear and press outside of his house. Like he was getting tired of all of this stuff. So eventually John would go to his lawyer and basically say, I know where Katie at. Now the lawyer was like, you know what? And John was like, yeah, I'm tired. I know where Katie at. Let's get this over with. So instantly, the lawyer calls detectives. Detectives meet with them. And basically, John takes, um, takes detectives through a whole maze, like a loophole. Like you had to remove certain things to basically get to Katie. So once they got Katie... They basically rescued her and they said Katie was, it was shocking. It was like she just came back from a triple something. She was smiling, you know, happy, upbeat. Like, it was like nothing never happened to her. Um, I'm thinking she was more of like a shock. It was like still a shock to her, but at the same time, happy that she had been rescued. But Katie was excited. And guess what? 
John would now be confessing to everything, but they still questioned Katie. And Katie gave from the time she got with her adopted family, um, you know, her godmother, from the time she got with her godmother all the way up into her kidnapping and the 17 days she was held captured by John, she gave the whole story. Basically how um, Linda's husband was raping her and abusing her, how she went to Linda and Linda didn't believe her, how Linda had her walking around the house like a whole maid, like cooking, cleaning, all of that stuff at nine years old, how John was basically like her best friend and he would come and make her feel secure. How the the dungeon that she was kept in, she played it like that was her happy space. And he was building it all around all of these months to literally kidnap Katie. And she didn't know none of this. Like Katie spilled out everything. And basically her mother, Katie states that she was able to watch TV after a while and she saw where the press was interviewing her biological mother. And she said she cried, she was emotional because she finally felt like somebody really, really wanted her and wanted to find her and loved her. And then she goes to say that Linda's husband was speaking on how he was really wanting Katie to be found and he hoped she'd be, she'd be found alive. And that angered her, that pissed her off and it made her cry a little bit because why? Why you want me found? Like you was doing all of this bad stuff to me and now you're on TV telling everybody you want me found like you really care. So uh, Katie had back and forth mixed emotions, but Katie was found and she was strong. She was a survivor and she was ready to tell her story at 10 years old. So now John goes to court and he confessed to everything. And Linda and her husband also go to court and they both are set for trial. Now, John Esposito had uh got sentenced to 15 years to life because later did they determine that he was not even in the big brother big sister program matter of fact they did a background check on him and realized that john esposito was basically affiliated or charged with before a kidnapping of another child so the big brother and big sister program denied his application from the jump. So he was a creep the whole time. And detectives knew and they were on him. They just felt like his story wasn't lining up. Why did you want to be this best friend to a nine-year-old girl? Which was really weird to detectives and he just looked at creepy. John Esposino deserved the 15 years to life. Now, Linda and her husband went to trial. Now, Linda's husband was sentenced to four to 12 years in prison for molestation of Katie. And basically it didn't state whether the aunt, you know, received any type of sentence or whatever, but Katie went through a rough patch. And now Katie basically is an advocate for missing and exploited children. And also she's a best-selling author. Katie also has a husband and two children. And instantly she was adopted with a adopted family. And she had a mother, a father, and siblings. That was the best adoption that Katie could ask for. She always dreamed of a nice family and soon one day her own family so katie goes to tell children that were abused kidnapped or anything that your past does not define you at all you make the decisions of your future and make the best of it katie is a strong woman and she was also a strong child and until this day katie still speaks up and vouch for people that were abused kidnapped or anything else 
and then it's just going through a hard time. Katie, we salute you for being strong those 17 days. And girl, keep going and keep pushing those that were victims just like you. You guys, don't forget to like, comment, and definitely subscribe to my channel. Join the family. Join the story times. We would love to have you over here. You guys, thanks for watching. Peace.